Okay, um, first of all, thanks uh, Martin and the organizing uh, committee to ask me to give this talk. And uh, this is uh, probably more introductory than the concluding talks because they can have a tour afterwards. So after I finish the talk, I have a few slides to show about tours. Hopefully it doesn't occupy my time, yeah. So I want to uh, acknowledge first uh, the experimental group and uh, Michael Buring was a postdoc. He left for a professor in California now and the uh, current postdoc with Mark and uh, a student just graduated, Ethan, he's going to show you. He's been postdoc now and, uh, and also a new student, Austin. And of course, you know most of the people here, uh, but uh, and I uh, point out the, the, the people you're not that familiar with, like Akira Kageyama, he helped me at the beginning uh, how really understand the excellent circulation. And uh, we knew he's a student, was a student of Jeremy, now he's a graduate, did a lot of simulations, and uh, some of them have been showing the poster outside. And also uh, Jim Stone, who helped a lot of the new we knew simulation. And uh, of course, there's special accomplishment about Steve and uh, Piro here about uh, their discussions and uh, encouragement of the whole project. So I want to get the message first, because I could be cut off by Jeremy. And <laughs> and no <laughs> that's the conclusion thus far, in my opinion. There's no conclusive evidence that the, the MI has been observed in the lab. Doesn't mean it's not exist. I mean, maybe we didn't know how to really understand it, or maybe we, maybe we, we knew it. Maybe we missed something that we already in the data, something like that. But to me, uh, it's still not conclusive. But doesn't mean we didn't learn anything. So, but we learned a lot actually in the past few years, especially uh, from uh, some notating flaw from the lab. Probably we will learn for the coming years, and especially we uh, expanding our experimental parameter regimes and also using different kind of material like plasma even to experiment. And uh, then well, before I get too, s too much specific, I want to say there's uh, maybe three general classes experiment we can envision in the lab to study MI. And I listed them and I uh, point out uh, what we can learn from each of the class uh, and uh, from the point of view of the physics. So for hydrodynamic experiment, probably what we want to know for this particular MI problem is the stability of the highly, I mean, notating shear flows in large Reynolds numbers. For magneto hydrodynamic experiment, which is particularly for liquid metals, I would say we want to know the stability of that kind of flow in large Reynolds number, but with, uh, with moderate uh, uh, magneto Reynolds numbers by uh, limitation of the material, not, not by our desire, but the given conditions, uh, we can access the uh, type of uh, material we can have. The plasma experiment, uh, usually we refer to electron ion plasma, not uh, pair plasma per se, uh, with a varying degree of the, the neutral particles. That introduces another dimension, uh, maybe in a sense multiple fluid effects on top of so-called uh, MHT fluid or even two fluid. You, could, you can imagine there's a three fluid effects or by any combination of the two fluid effects in the three fluid plasma, plasma. So we're going to talk about a little bit each of them. And uh, uh, unfortunately, not everything is very conclusive. Just uh, some of them are just starting. OK, but here I want to emphasize there's a new way, in my opinion, to simulate in the NAV, so-called accretion disk problem. Because we have no gravity, and uh, maybe there's some, way, some special way, but uh, not in the NAV that easily. Maybe in a space shuttle, somebody uh, comp uh, trying to propose something like that. But we want to study some basic physics. And hopefully there's a uh, linkage. And there's no guarantee there's a linkage even. But we want to learn from the linkage. Or by examining linkage, we learn something in the middle, uh, in the process. OK, there's another um, like a summarizing scenario I want to put up front so that uh, we don't have to miss the important point. If I have to stop in the middle, still you have to remember this the table at home. <laughs> the table here, I'm trying to, maybe it's not uh, uh, inclusive yet. For example, the MI uh, column, which is say, well, what is the observational requirements in terms of alpha parameter measures we have talked about a lot yesterday. Then theoretical argument and the simulation, other net experiment or experiment. And also the nonlinear hydro thing we have discussed yesterday afternoon, I'm not going to repeat it. But I would say, well, uh, there's the prescription about so-called beta value, 
there. It's different from the beta we talk about, the plasma beta or any other beta. And that was a, a, a predict to require that kind of value to be meaningful in terms of accretion problem. Then if theoretically there's an argument uh, based on quasi-linear theory, I think, uh, it's, it must be negative because it's inward transport rather than positive, the outward transport of angular momentum. And in terms of simulation, I would say probably a long existing so far in Capricorn flows. And also um, for uh, the reason is it's not inclusive, so there could be other columns that I'm not including, but I'm not going, going to mention those, especially for uh, convection and that type. Thing. We discussed those a little bit yesterday. And as a NAB experiment, I uh, hope I can cover uh, what our view about other experiments in uh, maybe a, a simplified way. And also we are going to, uh, I'm going to show you some of the data from us and from the early 30 data, what was uh, mentioned by it was used for astrophysical by astrophysical community to deduce so-called beta. Then we talk about a little bit uh, all experiment. This is the beta value is different from the one we published in Nature article. It was uh, improved over because the Ethan, uh, you're going to see him, he's included more data than I initially included. So it actually reduced the beta value by factor two with that same confidence. And as they here, uh, we have started MHT experiment with Nikon Meadows, and then we have symptom data. But probably, I don't know, is it MI, first of all? And uh, if not MI, what is the relation with MI? I don't know the answer to that, but I have data to show you. And we have uh, a prototyping plasma experiment. If I have time, I show you a, a picture of them so that uh, we are trying to make progress towards that direction. Okay, so this is the summarizing slides. Hopefully I can come back to that slide again. So the basic idea here was uh, a theta crit flow uh, using liquid metal, uh, in this case, liquid ganium, uh, confined between two, two concentric cylinders uh, with different rotating speeds, omega one, omega two, and a uniform vertical magnetic field. Just like exactly what the classic MI was set up to do, except everything is global. It can't do a local and a double KB or, or a sharing box. It had to be a container in general. And that was actually start when Jeremy came to the NAB, give a talk, I'm thinking maybe it's eight years ago, in 2000. <laughs> and I would say, well, maybe everything can be done. And uh, then we used uh, Steve's uh, published uh, formula about growth rate in the uh, uh, re uh, review of the modern physics paper. That w w actually, that didn't include the eta square term there. No, that was being modern physics. Yeah, I mean, right, right, right. <laughs> I, use that, I use that formula. <laughs> That we came out, oh, that should be easy to do. And uh, it was a 10 centimeter, this way, that way, which is about two kilograms, and even without a net, just spinning slowly with a little bit of curved surface, you should be able to get the MI. It turned out, it's not the case, it had to note it much faster with the eta square term in here. And, uh, they had to put a cap because it's noting so fast, uh, liquid metal will go out quickly. So it becomes a classical telequet flow. So the idea is, of course, uh, we have no gravity, so we have to using outer cylinder as a container uh, create a pressure to confine uh, the rotating flow. So instead of pressure, f I mean gravity force, with pressure force pushing inward. But you have three parameter, omega one, omega two, and BZ. You can do a dispersion calculation, which is actually published by Saro et al. in, in 1999 uh, with the incompressible limit uh, WKB without the KRS in that case. And I found out the dispersion relation is rather identical even though the force balance uh, is different. But I have to emphasize this is linear dispersion relation. If taken non linearly, I'm afraid it will be different. Because I don't call it such, I mean, it's a dispersion relation, but we call it a saturation here. So we learned uh, backwards uh, what's the theta quid flow about, because we realized we are doing something classical problem. So we went back to the literature to study the century old so called quid theta or theta quid flow problem. We start with uh, a uh, Frenchman told a, called a crit, actually he's clever enough trying to use this device to measure uh, small uh, water viscosity at first, for the first time and uh, getting it right in factor two, actually. Then followed up by Rayleigh, as you, everything well known, and uh, G.I. Tanner, who really uh, quantified the effect due to viscosity and uh, did the experiment and the simulation himself alone it had perfect agreement, almost like that. Well, it wasn't, wasn't good enough. Um, so, yeah, actually, this device is pretty sophisticated if I read uh, the article. 
oh, okay, but it's not long enough. If you look at the, the economic security, it would be important, actually. That's why maybe there's a factor two uh, issue there. So we were learning backwards. The, the modern literature about Taylor queer flow is more like nonlinear dynamics. So there's a picture of the clear scope, a, a, a special kind of mix into the water to make a visualization easy. So this is the Namir case. This is called, uh, this is Taylor sale. I mean, so the instability, Taylor instability start. This becomes wavy, uh, I mean, wavy, becomes a spiral, becomes twist. It's like a rope, you know, go back and forth. This becomes turbulent. So it's a really uh, 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 experiment dream. You can realize, am I, if a similar fashion like that, you can visualize, you see turbulence, how, like this is the force of the movie show, it'd be really good. However, we can't do it because it's a liquid matter, you can't really see it. But now I just put a sentence that next year, uh, about a year from now, we're going to have 16th International Quetilla, uh, a long uh, series of the workshop, will be at Princeton University. I'm going to host with the uh, next meet. So uh, hopefully some of you may come back uh, to interact with that community, which is uh, maybe different from your astrophysical community, but it shares the same sh noting shear flow problem. You found it uh, interesting yourself. Okay, that's enough. So back in 2000 uh, with Jeremy, we uh, used WKB and also global linear norm. I calculate omega one, omega two, and uh, with varying main fields. I uh, did uh, come up with a stability diagram uh, a quick flow. So this is the RPM in that small 10 by 10 centimeter cross-sectional annulus. We found, oh, this is the place always stable, and this is really nine. Uh, above which is always unstable without main field. And uh, this is the region where without main field be stable, but with main field be unstable. This is really needed for uh, MRI. And then we no also look at the, the past experiment done actually by a Chicago, Chicago group in the 60s and uh, following up as a China Circus, uh, famous paper uh, about stabilization of main field on the already uh, hydrodynamic unstable flows. But those are for uh, experiment focusing on stabilization rather than destabilization. So it wasn't too useful for this problem. So we started ex experimental adventure. So um, I'm going to be brief with that. One thing we learned, again, backwards, is uh, almost century old, I uh, mean still century old, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Ekman, who is a geophysicist. He figured out how the coffee cups I mean, or tea cups, uh, things, how things work to stop the, the tea notating. If you stir the tea uh, or coffee, you, sh you see the, the, the notating ones, noting the fluid will stop in the next like, 10 seconds. But in reality, I mean, it's about seconds. But if you calculate viscosity, it should be a minute. So the real thing going on is uh, so-called Ekman circulation because the force imbalance around the boundary layer and bottom where the pressure force is still large, but the centrifugal force is small because the velocity is smaller. So you have the force imbalance that drive flow inwards, drive fluid inwards, circulate the whole thing, that's much more efficient to dissipate angular momentum than a simple viscosity. Um, we learned that way in a harder way by measuring uh, the profile, we construct a prototype experiment. I didn't have a skip picture to show you. Almost identical to this cartoon, we found there's uh, two big cells, Ekman cells, circulating like this. That's much more efficient to transport angular momentum than the MI would do, probably. And that modifies the profile from so called predicted quit profile, which meant to be infinitely long solution. So that means without the, the, the boundary effect. And uh, uh, lower it by uh, that much, that's significant enough to jeopardize our prediction. So then, then Kageyama, uh, who came up with the idea. Let's uh, modify the top and the bottom caps into different rings, and each have each ring noting different speeds. And uh, that you can, by increasing the number of rings, then you should be able to recover the quick solution without the boundary effect. And uh, we have to trade off so-called complication with experiment. We end up with two rings with a little bit larger uh, radius and height than originally uh, planned to get uh, so-called minimum requirements to get the quick profile to minimize Ekman circulation. Okay, so I skipped the, now about two years in time. 
and uh, we struggled a lot. And probably you see when you're doing tour, Ethan can show you how much struggle he has to go through to make that machine working. This is a cross-sectional view that we introduced two rings each end, a little longer than the original one. And also, um, each ring uh, is controlled by a constant pipe come out top. So it has a motor connect to the pipe that have uh, a driven speed that we want. And it can pair up the inner rings at the same speed, pair up the outer rings at another speed. Then you have four speeds, omega-1, omega-2, omega-3, omega-4. And uh, this is a picture before we completely assemble it, which is uh, in a way halfway through. So it's in the thing that this way, the outer, I mean, the inner ring and outer ring and the inner ring, outer ring made all plastic so that you can see through. The idea then was trying to make sure what the floor looks like before we put the nickel metal. That's why we put the, uh, as much as possible, transparent material. Okay, this is a movie. Uh, just see, this is, we, this is when we, uh, almost the first, about maybe two years ago now, using the laser Doppler velocimetry. I'm going to, this is a, a laser, a pair of lasers shooting into the water. Using that, uh, refreshing the particle from the, in the water, you can see, uh, you can measure the speed of the, uh, of the uh, flow. I'm going to skip the details. You can ask Ethan when you have tours. The reason I show the movie is we're not going to show you the real round today because uh, Mark, who was another postdoc, uh, had a little uh, <coughs> family problem and uh, we're not going to show you. That's why I'm showing the movie instead. So we've been seeing static uh, uh, device today. I, I was planning to show you real round so that you can see how things work. But unfortunately, for safety reasons, we cannot show you. Sorry about this. So then we, everything's working and then we try and say, let's, make sure the design still works. So this is the first measurement we did. This is a, a, a music velocity as a function of radius. And this is the notation here. This is the RPM units of the omega one, omega two, omega three, omega four, okay? But the reason this, this sequence is because they are enlarging uh, in the uh, increasing uh, radius for each com loading component. So this means the omega three equal, equal to omega four equal to omega two. It means it's like an old setup that everything comes with the omega two. In that case, uh, we have measured profile like points and compared the correct flow, and uh, they are different. Even though it's smaller difference than we think. So we want to match up this measurement to the correct profile. So we, we changed uh, profile. I mean omega three omega four. We keep the omega one omega two the same. Then uh, you see a uh, move uh, changed. And we keep adjusting it until you can really matching it exactly. So the, ac the error bar here is frustration level. It's not the error of the, your average velocity measurement. And maybe we will overdo it a little bit like that. So now we are ready to do a MI experiment. Then that time, um, Jeremy said, well, stop here. Maybe we should look at something, look for something else before we do MI. Uh, this is this problem, so-called nonlinear hydro problem in quasi Capranian flows, where uh, whether you can have nonlinear instability in hydro when you have enough Reynolds number. This is data from Taylor in published in 33. He saw the normalized torque as a function of Reynolds number uh, decreases, boom, this is uh, for the nonlinear case, I mean the nonlinear hydro case. This is a supercritical case, this is a, a, a normal one. So he saw the sign of a supercritical subcritical transition to turbulence. And uh, NATO, I, as you know, Ricardo Zhang used it to derive the beta. So Ricardo has uh, did himself experiment, uh, actually verified so-called this regime where omega two is large, omega one is small, he saw the transition to turbulence. But in the Capernaum flow case, would be like this area, he also claimed to see the transition to turbulence. But later on, According to Piero, I mean maybe it's, it's, it's the transition is not really turbulent. Maybe it's to something wavy state, and uh, it's un unidentified. So, so we, that time we had seen lots of activity in the field, mostly from theory and numerical simulations on this subject. And Jeremy says, "Can we stop here? And do something uh, useful immediately?" Which we did. I just do summarizing here. So we stopped in the water for about a year and it ran four runs, intensive run, each run like a one week, and they started uh, flow in the, in the diagram omega one and omega two by plotting the Reynolds number. 
then you have uh, every point is a flow we generate, measure it. And for these flows are quasi Capriam. Those flows are past flows. I, have to, I don't have to explain. So we found, um, oh, okay, found those flows are as quiet as uh, a solid body, which is really surprising. But still not good enough to test the idea uh, proposed by uh, Ricardo Zam. So we went one more step to try to measure so-called the rate of stress directly. And that can be translated into beta value with that formula. And uh, we did, and uh, we had to go through random error, system error things, and we found, uh, uh, this is a picture when you need a shooting vertically. Actually, we didn't imagine we needed vertical transparency of the things, but good things we did it. With very thick acrylic uh, plastic, of the, it wasn't too easy to do, but the good things that we had to uh, transplant the excess in the vertical direction. So that was a, this is a concluding slide for that study that uh, we raised the Reynolds number, measures of beta value, Reynolds stress, and uh, we see it's not different from the zero, always within error bar zone. And uh, Ethan has included more data than the original paper we published. He was able to reduce his beta value with a smaller number. And uh, I'm not going to dig into too much uh, because uh, nothing really new to report because nothing more than just nothing. Okay, so I want to move on to the nuclear matter experiment. I, I think I have five minutes. Okay, so um, fitness there is very different. We want to know am I is there? If it's there, is saturation or not? Of saturates, then what's the saturation? The small, really prime number. The final number for the uh, nuclear metal is ten to minus five or ten to minus six, and the uh, question was, can you have a turbulence? Remember, it was a question force was imposing, so that's an interesting question itself. And also, there's another thing which is Jeremy going to discuss that maybe by having having MHD effect, given it's a very diffusive main field, can change uh, hydrodynamic stability uh, in the high noise member. But I'll leave that for discussion. I'm not going to talk about today. But we can do that uh, by experiment. So when we are struggling with the water, and uh, somebody in the, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say somebody, uh, Maryland group uh, was able to uh, uh, move on to detect something similar to MI, they say. I would say it's still similar, uh, even there's uh, eight, uh, four years past their publication. And the reason similar is because they saw uh, a diagram like this, the RM, it's a nucleus number, it's a main field. They saw the transition to so-called uh, the MI-like behavior, like perturbation in the main field or increase of torque, is similar to the diagram we produced, even though it's not the exact same, because they saw no axisymmetric mode rather than axisymmetric mode. But we have concerns, uh, really MI, because first of all, the bond conditions are a little worrisome, because they're using copper as in the sphere, which threats the main field. So how the, the main field has come off the coupling into the nuclear metal, how that exact coupling between two is not clear. And also the non asymmetrical case yeah, is not really predicted by uh, calculations. So we don't know. So I have to say, we still don't really understand. And uh, we have to ask ourselves, have we really learned from this experiment? And uh, have been really come up with? Of course we learned, you can try hard and find something similar but really exactly what we learned, that's what I don't get it yet. The meanwhile, we learned something from this experiment, uh, which I think is much more uh, uh, calculated in terms of theory and diagnostics. So this is a group in Germany, and uh, actually in 2005, Holbach and Nuriger predicted uh, by having helical main field instead of pure vertical, it can lower the critical reference number by order of three order of magnitude. This means your RM is 10 to minus 3, or 10 to minus 2, different definitions. It's much below 1. I still have instability. That's very interesting, uh, even though it's slowly growing, of course. And uh, uh, Stephanie et al. in, uh, 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 I, guess, I think it's a trans thing, and uh, they did the nuclear gathering experiment. There's a picture of the exact experiment. They saw something similar happen. This is their ultrasound signals, the vertical velocities as a function of time as a function of z. They see the, the patterns going upwards. And that is claimed to be a, a verification of this particular theory. And one the 
the we knew the, our students, he really interested by the experiment. He decided to submit it almost one to one because the random was so small, except it's asymmetrical. Bounding condition, everything is right. He was able to reproduce uh, the traveling waves. The, at this time, he stopped bounding there. Uh, perturbation because it means it's make a suddenly becomes a uh, periodic bounding in vertical direction. He saw things going away. So uh, he says, well, it's not really a global mode, rather it's a, a tra traveling wave. So there's still a debate. They don't agree. So we have to really fi find out. But we learn a lot. Uh, at least one thing that something can be different with diffusion magnetic fields. So this is a movie I want to show. Oh, I forgot, that's why, right. it was here. It's not, it's, oh. it is stable there. I'm sorry, that's important for this community that to know. It's not easy to, to trigger this problem. I mean, this instability in accretion disks. But however, the, the physics we learned there, we had to be open-minded a little bit. By very diffusing magnetic fields, maybe it changes the character of something you from. Even though it's a, you know, it's a very tiny, tiny uh, magnetic Reynolds number. That's the movie I want to show uh, because in the tour, you, know, you won't be able to sh see. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll quit probably here. This is the one we had a recent experiment. It's a Princeton at this point. Omega 2 is equal to 0. Omega 1 is finite. It's a hydrodynamic unstable. It's like a mirroring experiment. It's a surface measurement of a B BR, a function of total angle and Z. As time goes on, you see there's something shows up. It obviously, is some long asymmetrical well, modes. And if we do a uh, free analysis of that, oh. uh, now you find uh, there's multiple peaks in frequency. Take a, you know, uh, a typical one point. You see three peaks, actually I'm going one, two, three, with split, some of them. The split is proportional to angular velocity, actually. That be consistent with the dispersion relation, as I show you the uh, so-called uh, incompressible. Com well, I talk to later maybe. It's a little specialized case, but more relevant to the uh, uh, geophysical combination side. And uh, because the MI dispersion relation with K is omega, you have split in the frequency. The difference are omega actually. So plasma experiment. I just showed one slide here that we can what we can study. We can study anything beyond MHT like a whole effect, and for diffusion, this is a kind of one of the three fluid effects. The kinetic effect, tomorrow we're going to hear more. But not too much radiation, maybe very hard to get more like that. Yeah. Anyway, so, so I'm going to skip that. You and tell uh, us about general relativity. <laughs> well, you can imagine if you're really being fast, you know, if you're using electron. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's the concluding slides. What they really learn from the NAV. First of all, they have underestimated nature. This is, you know, you have to confirm the, the reality. Don't, they have underestimated that. Secondly, they have underestimated the old ideas. You learn more from the new ideas sometimes. Uh, thirdly, well, we know the global boundary is very important. So the question is the local shearing box simulation are really useful? Maybe useful to some degree, but not the all the way, probably. And also, this probably is not important. And, uh, and, uh, after all, we really found out the richness of the physics of noting and sharing flow. There's lots of things to learn in the coming year, and we're going to enjoy that with together and with uh, simulation and other experimental you know, theoreticians. Thank you. There's no difficulty right now. It's a matter of implementing it. Right now, we're ready to, to raise the speed to, uh, with the omega 2, omega 1, you know, <coughs> with the omega 3, omega 4 all together. To, so nothing in your way, in your way. It's a matter of time to do it right. Do it. And it should be there. Yeah. Oh, well, we'll see. <laughs> I hope it's there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>